So here we are, sketch number five already. Now you might be looking at this one and thinking, why on earth would anyone want to sketch something like that? An old, dirty, rusty factory, you know, where's the pretty landscape with the trees and the flowers and the flowing fields? But I want you to bear with me. And if that's your initial reaction, then why not give it a go? Because I think this one could potentially be one of the most rewarding. There's so much going on here that you simply cannot get caught up in any of the detail. I mean, just look at all of that that's going on there. It's it's a bit of a mess. So we've got to really simplify this and all we can do is give an impression. So I appreciate that this subject matter is not everybody's cup of tea. It might be the last thing that you go for. And that's precisely the reason why you should give it a go. Expand your horizons, get out your comfort zone because you never know, you might discover a style and a type of subject that you never would have otherwise that you really, really enjoy. So what are some of the challenges there's probably going to be many of them. What are some of the challenges that we need to look out for when we're drawing this out? And what are the elements that we need to focus on, uh, focus on getting right more than anything else? I actually think the composition of this is really quite strong. There's a lot of perspective going on here. So the, the photographer is at a what's called a ground level. Uh, maybe even you could consider it a worm's eye view. And he or she is looking up at these chimneys here. So you've got what's called three-point perspective going on. And three-point perspective, if you just think about, imagine looking up at a skyscraper and it goes up to a point way up in the sky, that's your three-point perspective. Just look at how this chimney in particular has got a lean to it. But we know that this chimney is straight up. The perspective that we're looking at it from gives it a lean. Okay, so it's not the leaning Tower of Pisa. It's simply that we're looking from down ground level and this chimney is going up. And these four chimney stacks are almost going up like a skyscraper. Imagine these as the four corners of a skyscraper. So we've got this nice three-point perspective going on, and that compositionally is going to be quite strong. We've also got a lot of perspective going on in this angle as well. So this part of the building here is as big as this part of the building, but it looks a lot bigger, doesn't it? And it tapers off almost to a point down here because we're a lot closer to this end than this end. So it's going away in the distance, it's getting smaller. And this is why I'm quietly confident, it's probably gonna be the kiss of death, but I'm quietly confident that this could turn into quite a nice sketch if we get the basic structure and the basic perspective right. If you do that, it doesn't matter so much if everything in between is a little bit messy and a little bit disjointed. So what we're gonna do, and what this is gonna be a great exercise in doing, is ignoring everything that's going on in this middle bit here, all this detail, and just looking at the overall structure. So I'm gonna be looking at this big shape here, okay? And this is basically a rectangle, but a rectangle in perspective, a rectangle that's going away from us. So we've got this big shape here, and then we've got this that's going away from us over here. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll draw out a, a rectangle on a piece of paper so you can see what I mean. I'll go and put this on charge because it's about to run out of battery and we'll make a start on the sketch. But stick with me, you can do this one, I promise. So where do we start? Well, let's just put a line in just towards the bottom of the paper, just to indicate the, the bottom edge of the fence there. And now I wanna think about this whole complicated structure with all the various elements just as one big block. And the most important line for this one is this top edge. Now I know you're not gonna be able to create a line that touches all the various elements. There's bits that stick up and stick out and you can't get one line that touches all of them. So just choose something that represents as best as possible the line that goes across. And again, feel free to lay your pen over your reference if you need to, but I'm just gonna try and judge that by eye and see it as, a, as an angle as best I can. So just using the side of the pen, you'll be getting used to that by now. And I'm just gonna look at what point I think the structure goes away into the distance that way. So this side of the structure here. And it's, I'd say somewhere around about here, isn't it? It's about three quarters, a little bit more than two thirds of the way across. So I'm just gonna put a vertical line in for that. And then I'm gonna look at how, if this was just one big block, how that line there, probably not quite as steep as that, goes away into the distance. And this side is quite short, obviously comparative to this one. And it's like one big oblong that's getting smaller into the distance. Okay, so not too difficult so far. And if you look at this, imagine if there was just like a doorway here. 
you know, and a, a window up here. You see how it's like a big stretched out house? That's the kind of thing that I want you to think about. This is just one simple block, but it's going away in the distance, so this side is smaller. Now the chimneys are the next most important thing, I think. So we're gonna put this one in first, and I'm, it's not a straight line, is it? We've got this, what's called three point perspective going on, so it's got a slope to it, and you can just look at the edge of the reference photograph to judge the amount of that slope. And I'm just gonna put one single line in for now. So I'm not gonna worry about the thickness. And next, I wanna look at the angle between the top of this chimney and the top of this next one here. So I know that this chimney is, that's around about this position here, isn't it? And again, it's, I can look at it, it's got a slight angle to it. It's not as much as this one. It's a little bit more vertical. Just lay your pen over that if you need to see that more clearly. But the angle between this and this is gonna be roughly the same as this angle. It's gonna be a little bit steeper, and it depends because the chimneys might be a different height slightly. But if you do it roughly that same angle, or you can use your pen again to measure, we're gonna do it roughly that angle. There's the height of that one. Now this one is, this next one is quite close. So I'll line in for that, and obviously it, the bottom of it gets covered. But the distance, or the, sorry, the angle between the top point here and the top point here, we're gonna make it parallel to this line. So I just judge the angle of that one. So I think it's gonna be around about that point there. Make that one a bit higher. Let's check that. So something around about that. Now look at the angle between these two. So the position is, this chimney is slightly closer to this one. So I'm gonna put in a a line that represents roughly the center of that. I can look at the angle here and the angle between these two. And again, this angle here, if there was an imaginary line between these two, it's gonna be roughly the same angle as this one. So one, two, three. Now that I think is fairly simple. Anybody of sort of any drawing experience or skill level can do that if they just take the time and measure the angles, that's not beyond anyone. And that is the most important structure, the most important foundation to get the good perspective that's gonna make this, I think, a nice strong composition. So once that's in place, if you wanna just add a bit of thickness to the chimneys. So obviously they, they taper slightly, but I do wanna get this lean to them and then this one here, this one goes down a little bit further. It's not covered by so much stuff. If you're not sure how to put the curve on the top, you can just ghost your pen over the reference photograph just to get a feel for what that curve is like and the angle of that curve. We've got this one here, so I need to remember that this is the midline that I've put in. And this one goes all the way pretty much down to the bottom, but the, the right-hand side of it gets lost. Maybe a little bit thicker than when I've done it. So I'm using the pen in quite a sketchy way, in the same way that I would use a pencil. I'm not trying to get one single neat line. I'm not worried about that. It's going to add a nice character to it as well, I think. There we go. And then if you want to just sharpen that line up, you can do. So let's just put a few of the bigger structures that we can see, the more obvious ones. And once we've got those in place, all the details and the bits and pieces in between, we can just put in very quickly, haphazardly, almost just a series of random marks to fill in the, the white space of the paper. And the viewer's eye will, will make up what that is. So the big structures that I can see are this kind of shed-like structure on the top. It's a little bit of perspective we've got to consider. So we'll do that one in a moment. I've got this big kind of blocky, what is it, chimney thing, I don't know, vent on the side here that I can put in. We've got obviously this cylinder here. And then there's four tanks here. And these are nice because they're obviously the same, so they're the same size, but this one here is a lot smaller than this one here. Same for some tanks at the bottom here, so we can put those in too. So maybe about five or six different big structures that we can put in, and then the rest we'll put in really quickly and really loosely. So I'm gonna start with this one at the top, and the vertical is, is easy enough, it's straight down. 
and the top line is going to be just a slightly steeper angle than this one. So you can measure it if you want to. I'm not going to bother because I'm just going to try and do all this by eye. But then just have a look at this side here. It's got a point to the roof which makes it more challenging. But we want to make sure that this face here is the same as this face. It's kind of going away into the distance. So I'm just looking at the angles of these lines. This is the easiest way to deal with perspective. You don't need to think about vanishing points and drawing things off to uh, a vanishing point on the horizon line into the distance if you can just see these big major angles. And then I've probably made mine a little bit bigger than what is on the reference, so I'll probably only just fit that cylinder in, but that's all right. That doesn't matter. So let's put this in. So we've got a nice straight line there, a nice straight edge and for that side. Now this line here, it's only small, but it's an important one. So it's parallel to this uh, construction line that we put in. This doesn't really exist. This is just something that we put in to get this overall block shape that we can use as a reference for all the other uh, horizontal lines that we put in that are going away into the distance. So let's just put the thickness of that structure in and then it sort of comes out here, doesn't it? It's maybe got a little bit of thickness to it there. And then let's just put this end piece in. So it's sort of sticking out here. This line is going to be parallel to this one. And then this line as it goes away in the distance, roughly parallel to these. And then we've got some just little flat buildings at the bottom there. They look like little porter cabins. And then we've got this cylinder structure. So this one should be relatively easy to put in compared to everything else because it's not in any sort of perspective. And then there's all kinds of stuff going on at the top, but just see it as one shape, just one big shape. And then we can put some details in it uh, when we come back. We'll come back over and do like a second pass and put some details in with the pen, see how much detail we want to put in before adding the watercolour. But I just want to get the big structures working from bigger structures first, building that foundation and then putting in the details later on. Okay, so what about these tanks here? Before I put them in, what I'm gonna do is just put a line in to represent the top of them. Now the very top edge that we put in has obviously got an angle to it, okay? And then as we move down through the structure, that angle becomes flatter and flatter and flatter until the bottom line is, you can just see the bottom edge of my paper, it's perfectly parallel to this bottom edge, so it's perfectly horizontal. So you don't actually have to worry about constantly measuring the top edges of things on your reference photograph. If you just think that as the structures move down from the top to the bottom, the edges are going to move in that sort of direction. Okay, so You've only got to be about right. You don't have to take them to vanishing points so they all perfectly meet up at a point, you know, way off your paper somewhere on the left here. They just need to be roughly along those sorts of lines there. So for the top of these kind of uh, whatever they are, these big canisters, cylinders is, is there. The bottom edges, which is about here, isn't it, are going to be along that sort of a line there. So just on a slight angle comparative to the bottom one. And then the first one is, it's around about here. So I'm just going to put that one in place. And then the next one is slightly bigger. And then the next one again is bigger again and a bit further away and I've not got the positions of these right look this one is way too close to that but I'm not worried it doesn't matter and then we've got the this bit that comes into it I'm not even going to attempt to try and name the different bits and pieces of, of what's going on in here but we've got those bits in and then we've got these other bits sticking out so each one I'm just trying to make a little bit bigger as it gets a bit closer to us. And then this angle, as it goes into the building, is going to be the same as this angle line. So it goes in, in, in there, in there. Uh. 
and then we've got these bottom tanks as well and they just seem to be sort of halfway in between a little bit lower down than what I've made them uh, so let's say the top of them is here and then the bottom of them we'll put in here so we've got one which is to the left of this I'm just quickly looking at the position so we've got one tank in here and then the next one so they're going to get a bit bigger and the top edge is going to get a little bit higher so there's two and then three there and then that's is the three there's four yeah there's four so again I put them in the wrong place they should all be over to the left but it doesn't matter it's a quick sketch and then you've got these pipes coming out at the top and then we've got some kind of a fence or maybe even a hedge does that look like a hedge I don't know a fence or something in there but we can just put that in very very loosely and quickly oh we've got some palm trees okay any other big structures there's a box thing coming off here so let's just draw that in the same perspective I've got these as guidelines again this angle that goes off here parallel to this one and then you've got it's kind of like a scaffold structure but well, there's a nice blue color to that so I want to definitely add some of that blue and I think that's going to be quite a nice color to put in there's another one up here so I'm starting to get a little bit looser now let's get this gray box shape in okay we've got a big kind of tank cylinder stroke something coming off this one so I've got this construction line to go from so it's going to be slightly steeper angle than that one so if it was parallel it would be there just slightly steeper I'm not going to bother measuring the angle as long as I get it slightly steeper that's all that matters looks like a, a kind of a hopper thingy <laughs> let's just call everything a thingy some more of this blue scaffolding I think that's going to be quite a nice strong color to get in looks like a bit of a crane there there's another nice nice light blue cylinder that's a, a relatively clean shape isn't it amongst all of the all of the chaos okay so I'm quite happy with that as a, a kind of a, a basic overall structure and what we can just do now is start filling in a little bit of detail but I'm not going to spend any time observing the details you know very very quickly just getting a very quick impression and just putting something in to fill the gaps but I'm also going to put a little bit of shading in as well so where I think it's going to be a little bit fiddly to do with the watercolor I'm going to do it with the pen looking for the darkest areas of shadow look there's some nice shadows lots of nice shadows in and amongst this area in here up here around this bit around this bit some of the details as well in the chimneys so let's just put a few of those in I think these chimneys are going to be a nice sort of focal point so I'm going to just put in the uh, the curves for the the various sections the red where are we so it's red white another red one I've not got these quite right I've not done enough but again I don't think that matters as a detail there's a couple of little I know doors or something on there this one's not really got anything on in the way of a pattern this one's got a little bit of patterning on this one's got a nice bit of detail just towards the top so just look at the angle of the line as well measure it if you need to so I haven't just drawn it straight across I've tried to follow the curve is following this line here so it's more of that angle to it rather than straight across 
Okay, so a little bit of crisscross and bits and pieces or whatnot represent stairways. I just want to give this impression of lots of busyness, lots of stuff, bits and pieces going on. I'm going to start to put in some shadow or bits of dark tone in between things that I'm not going to be able to get in with the watercolour. So I want to keep the pen constantly moving. Remember that first lesson? And that stops you from getting too hung up on a particular area. If you keep it constantly moving, you have to just pay a token effort to uh, what you see in front of you, just putting in an impression. So I'm just doing lots of marks. I don't want them to be too neat. I want lots of busyness. Look at this nice strong dark here. That'll really offset that. If we put that in a nice pale blue, maybe even leave it almost the white of the paper. I think that'll be a little area of calm amongst all of this chaos. Lots of nice strong darks in here. All right, and just leave a little bit of white of the paper between them. I can go over with a wash of the blue and it'll pick up all those bits of white and just hopefully give an impression of of uh, scaffolding without me having to paint in every every bar and every strut. So let's get some nice dark shadows again around these areas because I think these are about the clearest structures that you can make out amongst all of this. So if I put some nice strong darks around them, that will just help lift them and put a bit of a colour on them. Same idea up here. All right, I think that will do for the sketch. So hopefully we've captured the sense of perspective. Uh, the chimneys, I think they work okay. We've got lots of, lots of detail going on there that you can see has been simplified. After I put these main structures in, the ones that I could identify, I'm just then making lots of kind of haphazard marks. You could put any old marks in just to add detail, just to add interest, break up the white spaces. And I think now we can add a little bit of colour. I want to focus on getting some of the blues in, some of the strong blues, if I've left enough of the white of the paper, particularly on the, the scaffolding areas. We'll get some nice reds in on this chimney here. I think that'll be nice, a nice strong colour. Maybe a few rusty coppery colours in around the place. A little bit of blue in the sky. And let's see what it ends up like. Let's add some colour then. So I'm going to start with the chimneys. And I'm going to go for a bit of yellow ochre. So I just want to create... Just a range of different rusty, yellowy, browny colours. We've got a little bit of the burnt sienna. And just a little bit of the ultramarine. So you can see how that's making a muddy grey already, just with the colour that is on the brush. And then we just clean that out. Get a little bit of cadmium red. A little bit more of this brown, this burnt sienna. Okay, and then, touch one of the blue, and then we can just mix up variations of a, a kind of a muddy grey colour. So I think that's going to be a little bit too strong and a bit too dark. I'll just test out what that's like. That's not too bad, actually. Squeeze a little bit of water out just onto the tissue and then I can just soften that edge off. And we'll do a similar sort of colour on this one. Maybe just vary that slightly with a bit more yellow. 
and then if we get some of this cadmium red and just drop it in it's obviously not as bright as that on the actual reference so I'll just add a little bit of blue just to muddy that up a bit make a little green colour a bit of a greeny grey and um, I'll have this one as a brighter yellow so that's a little bit too strong of a mix for me so I'm just going to squeeze a bit of water out Take a bit of the excess off onto a tissue and then you can just pull that colour through. Let's just vary that near the top so we'll add a little bit of this rusty orangey colour. Just drop that in. And there's just a little bit of shadow down that right hand edge and then can we make use of these colors elsewhere I'm sure we can somewhere maybe get the cadmium yellow and I'm just gonna look for places I can just add some of these colors that are already on the palette maybe some of the canisters these big vat things so i don't want to go overboard with the color i'm going to leave little areas of white there you can see just touch in some of the oranges splash a yellow onto this one What about some rusty colours on uh, on these ones? And then a bit of the bluey grey, a bit more blue than that. So I'm literally just picking up bits of colour as I can see them. I want to get some of the nice kind of turquoise blue in for these pipes. So I've got to make sure that I leave some of the white of the paper for those ones. Put them in before I forget about them. A few yellows and browns just up here. Okay, let's get some of that nice turquoise blue in. So the Prussian blue is going to work well for that. I'm just going to use it as is. I'm going to have quite a strong mix. And then just with the point of the brush, let's see if we can just pick out some of this scaffolding. So again, we're letting the drawing and the sketch and the ink do most of the heavy lifting, most of the work, and the watercolour is more of a supporting act. So you haven't got to fill in every last little gap, every last little bit of white paper. What about a nice light blue on that? Maybe use a different blue, go for the ultramarine. So there's some other colours in there that have kind of dirtied it slightly, but I just want a real light wash of this and maybe just put just put it on one side. It's 
get a little bit of green, a bit of spot colour on those palm trees. I think there was a few around here, probably you're not going to be able to see them very well, but i just spot a few colours here and there. I just make a thicker mix of the ultramarine and the burnt sienna. Just add a little bit of detail just around the top of the chimney, just where this rust is. These are a focal point, aren't they? So I think it's going to be nice to get some detail in for those. And then we'll just do a little touch of colour just along this bottom edge. There's all kinds of colours going on there, so let's just vary them. I did see some little bright red cranes just there in the background. And uh, a little tip that I heard from Rob Dudley many years ago always find an excuse to put a little spot of bright red in somewhere because it just really helps to lift things so a couple of little red cranes in the background okay so clean the palette and we'll just throw in a bit of blue for the sky and I think that will be it done so really quick with the watercolor mostly about the sketch sketch wasn't as time consuming as the one before the uh, one from Greece Santorini so I think it's actually a simpler sketch than than that one um, but the watercolour is really quick, really, really simple. So we're going to go for my favourite Prussian blue. Just a real light wash of this. I don't want too much on at all. Let's, because it's an industrial scene, let's just add a little bit of uh, purple just to grey it down slightly. And then I've just marked out, you can see where the smoke's coming from the chimneys. So I'm just going to work around that. Sky is typically lighter towards the horizon, so you can just pull the colour down, just lighten it off, and then nearer the top, a little bit darker. Squeeze the brush, a bit of water into the fibres, and then you can pull that colour down just so it softens off towards the the top of the uh, top of the factory. And I've got to say, you know, the Pentel brushes. Now that I've experienced both, are significantly better than the Derwent ones. The Pentel ones are the ones I've always used before. Those Derwent I hadn't used. Uh, but yeah, the Pentel nib is a lot better. I'm going to leave it there. And I really enjoyed that. It is a, a, you know, a different subject matter than what I've done before. I've never painted a factory before. I'm sure you haven't either. But give it a go. It's quite nice to be faced with all of this complexity and busyness and to realize that you you simply can't you know put it all in in its correct place you've just got to focus on the biggest elements and and hope that everything else in between just works itself out and makes some sense and i think it does i, I think it works quite nicely as a sketch so we're going to go on to number six now it's a tricky one so is number seven the two most difficult i've saved for the end uh, but don't let that put you off we'll simplify things take your time you'll be okay so yeah have a go with this and I will see you very shortly.